السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته dear brothers and sisters uh, globally worldwide whenever you are whenever you are in different zones of this world may Allah bless you and make your day prosperous inshallah today we're talking about uh, a sensitive subject called Islamophobia or Kababophobia what is the relationship between Kababophobia and Islamophobia Kabab is a kebab that we eat once upon a time about 15 years ago, I was invited by the foreign office in London to speak about, to, to speak to the uh, young uh, uh, officers or young employ, uh, representative of the British uh, government in the embassies who are going to the Middle East. And my talk was uh, 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 terrorism and kebab. And everybody was shocked for the title. Because what's the relationship of kebab and terrorism? This was a movie by one of the four, a comedian, top comedian in Egypt called El Arhabu Kebab or Kebab and Terrorism. It was like a joke. Like terrorism is like a fake thing that we have created recently. This film was in the mid-90s. So what's the relation between kebabophobia and Islamophobia? If we look back after the Second World War, we find actually the Cold War started between the West and the East. The West led by Russia, which called the Soviet Union, and the East led by America and Europe, which called the civilized nations or the capitalist system or the liberal system or the democratic system, and the other one is the socialist, communist, whatever you call them. This war ended nearly at the end of Afghanistan war. And soon after that, there was a meeting in Warsaw between the Prime Minister of uh, UK, which her name is Lady Thatcher, and uh, President Reagan. And after this meeting, we started to hear, and instead of hearing the, the Cold War between the West and the East, we started to talk about a new division of the world between the North and the South. Somebody like me at that time did not understand what is the difference between North and South. I knew East and West because we lived during this era, but we realized that the North is Europe and America and North America and the South is Asia and uh, Africa. Okay. Majority of the people live in Africa are Muslims and a lot of a big number of Muslims also are living in, uh, in Asia. But we did not take any notice. We just thought that it's just a division, a new division by the politicians. Okay, let us start discussing what do we mean by phobia. Phobia is a Greek name, means continuous fear, a state or a status of continuous fear of the individual. Fear of something, or fearing, fearing of something, or fearing from something. Okay? You could fear to remember certain things happen to you. This kind of phobic attack can come to me when I smell something. When I rise to the top of the building, when they put me in a closed room, when I go and visit something else, and I've got different, different, different definition for different things. This continuous feeling of fear is a psychological problem. Affecting such an individual like myself, whether I'm a male or female, Muslims or non-Muslims. It does not have any distinction between that. And you can go to the psychiatrist and ask them. So after the division of the world to north and south, by late 90s, we started to hear a new terminology called Islamophobia. What is this? It's a research done by Renemy Trust in London, which means actually they actually against the people who are afraid from Islam as a religion. Somebody defined it that actually Islamophobia is a phenomena of racism 
or discrimination against Muslims. Or this came about after the rising number of Muslims who are immigrating to America, to North America, and Canada and North America and Europe. Somebody else said it's increased after September 11th incident. Whatever it is, phobia is a disease or a state of fear affecting a sick individual, regardless of his or her religion, culture, background, and language, and so on and so forth. What we're watching nowadays is those kind of sick people are focusing on one religion. Okay, fine. But this is the beginning. My fear is it's phobia against any religion, not only against Islam. What we call it religious phobia. Religious phobia. Maybe tomorrow somebody will come and say Christianophobia or Judophobia or Sikhophobia or uh, Buddhophobia or Hindusophobia or any phobia to anybody. Those people who are scared from you are sick. Are sick and they need psychiatric treatment. It's a psychiatrist and psychiatric treatment. treatment. Okay? To justify what we are talking about, let us talk about the history and how some people in the past were actually using religion for their political interest, for ethnic cleansing, or for the, during the Inquisition period in Europe, or from changing the demography, or for eliminating races used to live in certain areas, for economical reason or political reason. Let me start with the Muslims first, and the Muslim spread in the East and West from the 7th century to the 15th century. The conquest of what we call Bladi Sham nowadays, Bladi Sham, which is the area from Syria, Palestine, Lebanon, and the south of Anadolia, this was 633 to 640. Okay? Let us look at the conquest of Persia between 633 and 654, which is Iraq, Caucasia, Persia, and Khorasan. Let us all talk about the conquest of Egypt, 642. Okay? Let us talk about uh, actually the conquest in Andalusia, which is Spain and Portugal. It is 711. Okay? Let us look about the conquest of uh, uh, Constantinople, is 1453. If the intention of these people who came to this area with a different religion, is to eliminate, is to radically kill ethnic cleansing. We could not have seen different religion living in these places up till now. We could not have seen, actually, old temples, old synagogues, old churches, and monasteries, in this area up till now okay this is number one let us look at the other side of the coin and what i am saying those people who were phobic and did this atrocity against other religion with other races or other ethnic background are not true followers of the teaching of jesus peace be upon him mullahs peace be upon him or muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam what is the Catholic Church have done to the people who were not Catholic in Europe from the 12th century to the 16th century, especially after Martin Luther King? Then in Spain from, from 12th century to 16th century. This Inquisition, which if you go to 
Spain nowadays, and you see the museums which you talked about how those people who abused the authority of God, who abused the teaching of their prophets, were eliminating those people, whether they are Christian or Muslims or Jews. You know, this inquisition had been abolished in 1834. It was there from the 12th century till 19th century. Whether you are a sheikh, imam, monk, priest, pope, what you have done has nothing to do, has nothing to do, has nothing to do with Christianity, Judaism, or Islam. Don't fool us. You have phobia. You are a sick man. You are a sick woman. You need psychiatric treatment. Let us ask yourself, when Andalusia fall in 1453, uh, uh, 54 okay, why the Jews left the area and went to what we call nowadays Turkey or Constantinople or Istanbul? Why? Because they have lived a very happy life with the Muslims in Andalusia. Okay? Look at what happened to the citizens of Jerusalem in 1099 when it falls in the hand of who people claim that they are protecting Christianity. They have nothing to do with Christianity and they have no relationship with the teaching of Jesus, peace be upon him. Let us talk about what happened to the people in Baghdad in 1258 and the fall of Baghdad by the Mongol, the Mughal and the Tatar at that time. And how the impact of the loss of Baghdad library on humanity by those barbaric individuals who came to kill everybody in the city. This is the old history whether they are Muslims or non-Muslim. But if any follower of this religion are crossing the border of the te authentic teaching of the prophet and the revelation of God, he is phobic or she is phobic. And this is what happened in certain areas. Let us talk about the recent history. The Belgian occupation to Congo and the role of Leopold, King Leopold II who ruled the country from 1885 to 1909. They want rubber. They want gold from this area. You know how many people have been killed from Congo at that time? Up to 10 million. We know that some of the Africans are a little bit lazy. They cannot work very hard. So when they used to employ them and deny their ownership of the land, and if they do not produce as much as they want, they used to cut their hands. You see? Look at what actually happened in Mozambique. The Portuguese occupation, okay, occupied it for about nearly four or five hundred years, and they took independence in 1975 from 1498 to 1975. And the consequences of the occupation of the Portuguese to Mozambique, more than 400 years. Let's talk about the French occupation to Algeria from 1830 to 1962. People say that it's the land of 1.5 million martyrs. No, it's the land of up to 10 million martyrs. 1.5 million are those the people of the, the, in the liberation era, but the people during the occupation go up to 10 million people. Italy, what they have done to Libya. Occupation of Italy to Libya from 1911 to 1951 and killing more than 140,000 people, which more than one-eighth of the population of the country at that time. Ethnic cleansing of the the native people of North America, whether they're Canada or 
Yosef. Ethnic cleansing of the people living in New Zealand, which is Maori. Ethnic cleansing of the people who are living in Australia, which is aborigines. What happening nowadays? Those people who've done all these sort of things have nothing to do with Jesus, have nothing to do with Moses, have nothing to do with Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. They are phobic, they are sick, they need psychiatric treatment, and need psychiatrists. Let's talk about what Stalin has been doing to the Muslims in Russia by changing the demography and moving people from this zone to this zone to this zone to this zone. And this claimed the life of about tens of, um, um, could be up to 10 million Muslims. Let's talk about what's happening to the Uyghur, Uyghur in, in, in Xinjiang from the Buddhist. They claim they are Buddhist. They are not Buddhist. It's not the teaching of Buddha. It's not the teaching of Buddha. What's happening in Rohingya, to the Rohingya people in Arakan Burma, nothing to do with the teaching of Buddha. No. Phobic people. People who are sick need psychiatric treatment. Let us talk about what's happening to the Muslims in, Cent in, Af in Central African Republic, as we see since 19... Since 2014. Let's talk about what's happening to the people in Gaza and Palestine since 1935-36 and up till now. Let's talk about what's happening to the Yemeni at the, at the moment by their own fellow Muslims and the war, the unjustified war in Yemen and the disability or the inability of the United Nations to stop such a war. It has nothing to do with the teaching of Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. At all, those people are phobic and need psychiatric treatment. Also, those people who are killing people in Syria, whether they are Muslim or non-Muslims, whether they are Shia or Sunni, they are phobic. Phobic, it claimed the life of hundreds of thousands of people and the displacement and ref uh, of more than 14 million people inside the country and outside the country. And in Yemen, the people are affected by such war are about more than 20 million people. By Muslims, they, are not, they have nothing to do with the teaching of Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Let us talk about what happened to the Muslims in Bosnia between 1992 to 1995 by the others. No Christian church will allow you to do this. No single word of Jesus, peace be upon him, will give you justification to do what happened. First World War. It claimed the life of nearly 9 million people. Second World War. It claimed the life of between 70 to 85 million people. Vietnam War. Between 1955 and 1975. The invasion of the Alliance forces and struck American to Iraq in 2003. All this, all this, all this actually has nothing to do, has nothing to do whatsoever with any religion. That's why I call the people who said that we are fighting to defend our religion. I tell them, go and tell me that kebabophobia is better than your Islamophobia or Christianophobia or Judophobia or Sikhophobia or whatever it is. You are a sick man. You are a sick woman and you need psychiatric treatment. My appeal today to you, young people, learn from the history. Read the history and learn from the history to prevent it happening again. To prevent it happening to the Yemeni by the Muslims, to the Syrian by the Muslim and the Muslims, to the Christian, by the Christian, like the Inquisition period in Europe, and to others as well. Stop it. Rise and know the history and prevent, connect, communicate, and protect the community that you are claiming that you are protecting it. Humanity is for all of us. It's not only for one religion. It's not only for one race, it's not only for one culture, it's not only for one language, it's not only for one history. It's for all of us. 
And this earth is having enough wealth to satisfy all of us and to sufficient to all of us. Okay? So we talked about the history between different religions and what happened to different regions. Then we talked about the war which happened in different areas, particularly in the recent ones. Now we know, let us talk about raping of women. You know, the women in Berlin after the fall of Germany in the Second World War, they ran to the doctors. They wanted the doctor to give them medicine or medical uh, drugs to kill them because they knew that they'd be raped. You know how many million German innocent women were raped? Up to two million by the conquering armies. You know how many children who did not know their father born in Germany? Up to half a million. This has nothing to do with religion at all. At all, at all. And Jesus, peace be upon him, is innocent of this wicked act done by those phobic people. The same happening actually in Bosnia. When more than 40 to 60,000, between 40 to 6,000 young girls, Bosnian girls, have been raped systematically by the state. Having the same thing. Again, having the children who did not know their fathers. And the mother was suffering from what happened to her. Those are phobic. They have nothing to do with the Orthodox Church at all. And with the teaching of Jesus at all. Peace be upon him. The number of people who are killed in Bosnia war, nearly a quarter million, 80% of them were actually Muslims. And the rest were Serb and Croat. Nothing to do with the religion. Let us talk about the terrorist act taken by certain groups, such as, as has been mentioned about the IRA in UK, they were bombing the, 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 the market, the casinos, nightclubs, <coughs> to kill innocent people. The Al-Qaeda in Afghanistan, Boko Haram in Nigeria, Lord's Army, Lord's Army in Uganda, Antibalaka in Central African Republic, Daesh, ISIS in Syria and Iraq, Shabab in Somalia. All what they are doing have nothing to do with any religion. It is done by phobic people who need psychiatric treatment. Let's talk about the individual terrorist activities, Oklahoma bombing in America, 1995, claiming the life of 171,000 people and injuring 680. Uh, Dumplin School in, in Scotland, claiming uh, the life of 16 young students. Uh, the first was uh, the World Trade bombing in 1990, uh, World Trade Center 1993, claiming life of six people. And the second World Trade bombing in September 11th, claiming nearly 3,000 people and 6,000 uh, injured. Uh, U2 Island in Norway in 2011 by Andre Previk, killing more than 80 people, 80 young people between the age of uh, 12 and the age of 22. Uh, Iorowa. Uh, Colorado shooting in 27, uh, 2012 by somebody went to uh, a cinema or to uh, James Egan Gorms and kill, claim, killed about 12 people. <coughs> Douglas High School in Parkland, Florida, uh, killing about 17 young uh, students by somebody called Nicholas Cruz. This could be happening by any Muslim or anybody else. I'm not just talking about this. This happened by some Muslims as well. All those Muslims and non-Muslims are sick and phobic and they need psychiatric treatment. So to conclude and say what is the relationship between Islamophobia and kebab 
और कोफ्ता को फो कोफ्ता तो फोबिया कोफ्ता 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 तो फोबिया और मे बी वॉट दॉल इट फोलोफोबिया और वॉट दू कॉल द अदर वन इज फलाफिलोफोबिया यू नो फलाफिल फलाफिलोफोबिया और शीशा फोबिया वट एवर इट इज इट्स अ जॉक डोंट एवर यूज माई रिलीजन और हिज रिलीजन as a tool to cover your sickness my young people what you need to do to learn from the history that you should not repeat it again this number 1 to learn from the history that you have to live together that's number 2 to learn from the history that the world is enough for all of us and more than enough and the resources in this world is, is more enough for all of us to learn from the world that actually we are brothers and sisters from the same family the family of adam and eve to learn from the world that our mission on this planet is justice freedom uh, rights based approach equality fairness to everyone to learn from the world that we are all have the right to live in peace in this world so to learn from the history that actually do not repeat it again 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 education should be your tool don't become hot headed don't be uh, uh, bogged by somebody who can hook you on the facebook or on the twitter like what happened to the young girls and boys who went to uh, syria to fight and hooked by somebody never 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 to the parents look after your children and see whom they are communicating with on the social media and let us talk together or stand together to protect our planet from this phobic attack by the people who are really sick and they need psychiatric treatment they can call me whatever they want to call me as a muslims but i will tell them peace be upon you i have no time for you my all my time is to build humanity to help in building humanity spread peace stand together to protect the young people from being taken by those wicked phobic individuals thank you very much i see you next year as not not next year shall next week if you have the time wassalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh